Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Hoffman and today I'm going to show you how to build a really clean and effective projectile system for Godot 2D games. If you are a subscriber, welcome back, glad to have you. If you're not and you like this type of video, consider subscribing to my channel. It's the big red button to the bottom right of the current YouTube UI. So this is a game that I've just been toying around with, something I threw together to try to learn more about the Godot game engine. So pardon my placeholder graphics. Now, in this game, you play as a two-dimensional ship. You have the capacity to drift around space and fight waves of enemies that are progressively harder and harder. However, you'll note that you start with a weapon, in fact two weapons, which are short-range projectiles capable of inflicting damage to enemy entities and killing those enemy entities. If you look carefully at an enemy entity, you'll notice that damage is applied, and damage is applied to both shields and hull on the enemies, depending on what is available at the time of being struck by one of these projectiles. So let's take a look at how this works. Off the top, we have our typical player controller. And in a previous video, I talked about using entities. In this case, the entity class is ship. This is the base class from which all objects that are ships inherit. That could be a player, that could also be an NPC. That way, functionality that's common, like regenerating shields, power, or applying damage, can be applied consistently. Next off, we have the player controller. Mostly what this does is take input from the user. Now, when we're talking about projectiles, we're talking about this block here, line 28 to 36, if input is action pressed main gun. So what this does is check if the ship has attached guns and fires those guns if they are attached. Now this is important because you don't want, in a lot of cases, to have a single gun that someone is capable of firing. You want them to be able to swap in and out guns. So here, notice we're not looking for a specific gun, we're just looking for anything called main gun and making the assumption that it has a fire function on it. So what is a main gun? So let's take a look at a ship. I named this ship Pink Lightning because it's fast and, well, pink. And uh, it's just something that I came up with when I was fooling around with some pixel art. Now you'll notice here it's a kinematic body, it has a variety of other non-essentials on it, but most importantly, it has two nodes here that both contain a script. And you'll notice the nodes, if we zoom in up here, are attached where the guns are on the ship. This is important because you don't always want to fire from the center of mass from your player. If your player is carrying a, a weapon, you may want to identify that as a hard point and fire projectiles from that hard point. So here if we click on the script, you'll notice that this node, just a simple node 2D, has a projectile class attached to it. Now, what we're doing in this video today is demonstrating how to write a clean class for projectile weapons in 2D. So the important thing to start off with is this idea that you have a self position and an aim position, because you always want to start a projectile on you, and you want to project it out to your mouse position. That's typically how these things work. And you'll notice that I, I load in this blaster. Well, what is a blaster? If we go up here and we go to abilities, you'll notice the blaster is very simply actually just a projectile. And that might be confusing. I probably should have called it something like bullet. In this case, I was toying around with this game and hadn't really finished cleaning up all of the code yet. So I called it a blaster. Now we go back to the blaster. The idea is we instance a projectile. We make sure the projectile doesn't collide with the ship. We spawn the projectile. We make sure that it's rotated in the correct direction. And then what we do is launch the projectile out at a particular speed. Finally, right here, you can see that we actually add the instance of the projectile to the projectiles array right here. Now, why is it important that this all happens in one class? Why do we need all of this information? Well, like I said, this allows you to have a more modular system where you can easily swap in and out projectiles. But down here in the physics process is where it gets interesting. You'll notice that on every physics tick of this blaster weapon, there is 
first of all accounting for last shot so that's cooldown management but more interestingly right here we have for i and projectiles p equals i at position projectile and then we say if ticks right here is going to be greater than or equal to 40 then we queue free so this is a way of saying we don't want our projectiles to exist in the game forever and in fact if we boot up the game right here and we go to launch you'll notice that the projectiles disappear after a set amount of time in this case ticks now there's a number of ways that you could make sure that they disappear at the right time this is just one method of doing it but you never want to have the game engine busy sitting there doing math on projectiles that are way off the screen so any projectile that you include in your game should have a dissipation range and that's accounting for the dissipation range right here in fact it also erases it from the array so we stop tracking it in memory we also stop tracking it in physics now right here we do a little bit of collision data processing so first thing we do is because these are kinematic body 2ds we can look at their their move and collide and we can see if we get a collision and if there is a collision what we do is we check what we're colliding with now if we're checking that our collision is with a ship which is the equivalent of an entity in this ship shooter game then because each ship has an apply damage function we can apply damage to that ship and the damage will be applied in the correct order first hitting shields and then hitting hole and then if there's nothing left killing that NPC or opposing player in a multiplayer version of this game finally if it collides we also queue it free and erase it from the array now if none of these things happen we move up the number of ticks because the number of ticks are used to get rid of the projectile if it is on the screen too long so once again at the essence what we have is projectiles right here and if we fight with another player the projectiles themselves know how to apply damage so we don't have to do that in the player class the projectiles apply damage and only if it's another ship and the ship itself handles its own health and destroys itself if it goes below a certain range of hole and the beauty of this fu functionality is the blaster is really a weapon so if we look at this ship these two main guns are weapons and when they spawn the blaster projectile which probably should be renamed to bullet they manage that bullet all from within one script and there's no code whatsoever inside of the player controller that has to do anything but call the fire function everything else is independently maintained by the appropriate classes and because of that we can swap out guns we can make modifications to the blaster class etc and we never have to touch the player controller or any of the NPC controllers that make use of these projectiles so that's my overview on one way of implementing a projectile system I hope this is helpful for you and your Godot projects Thanks for watching.